Elite level carters are the most infuriating drivers in the racing world. Pound for pound, they possess a level of skill that puts almost any other form of motorsport to shame. Karting is unmatched in its pure, raw competition. Yet, ironically, if you ask many top carters if they'd trade it all in to join a Tim Pot car series, something undeniably less competitive, they'd often say yes. And here lies the paradox that plagues most motorsports outside of F1 and MotoGP. The quality of the drivers and competition matters a little if the series itself doesn't mean something. When fans sense that the drivers on track would rather be somewhere else, the spectacle loses its magic and they lose interest. The odd thing is that some of the fiercest racing on the planet you'll see takes place in the UK karting scene. Head over to PF on a summer Sunday for a club meeting and you'll witness grids full of insanely talented drivers. Sure, some of the classes like Rotax Max may be as dull as watching paint dry from an intrigue point of view, it doesn't change the fact that what happens on track is some of the highest level of racing anywhere to be found in the world. Yet this highlights one thing, what people say they want, often when fans berate F1 or whatever for not having on-track action, it doesn't actually translate to their behaviour. If it did, kart tracks would have to be turning spectators away, which they no longer do. So how do I know that karters are top level? Well, it's easy for me. I was lucky enough to witness Michael Schumacher himself race karts at the 2009 Scusa Supernats in Las Vegas at the Rio Hotel. There he was, the greatest of all time, up against the best carters in the world, Ardigo, Lammers, Foray and the like. Did Schumacher blow everyone away? Well, no, not at all. He was hovering around the top 10 the whole weekend and managed to scrape 7th in the final after a few carts ahead of him decided they'd rather not finish the race at all. Now, this is not a criticism of Michael Schumacher, I must emphasise this. On the contrary, as I discussed in The Science of the Racer's Brain, a book I co-authored, Schumacher's humility, the lack of ego that allowed him to test himself without fear of failure is exactly what made him so great in the first place. But it does prove the point that F1 drivers aren't magicians with ungodly abilities to corner quicker than anybody else. Watching Lammers claim victory that day, I realised that I witnessed one of the best drivers on the planet and yet Lammers and others like him will never receive the recognition they deserve. If you want to observe some of the finest talent in the world, it's there in carts. So why is karting so competitive? Why does it produce such good drivers? Well, it's a matter of access and opportunity. You can buy a car for a fraction of the cost of a racing car, throw it on the track and go flat out all day. In car racing, costs multiply astronomically. You can't just shell out 50 quid for an entry fee and hammer away at a local circuit. Car practice days often involve endless delays, red flags if someone crashes or beaches it, and the constant threat of a wallet draining repair bill. And yes, this accessibility in karting does lend itself to the idea that sim racing might cultivate some of the finest driving talent today. But let's be clear, for the purposes of this discussion, physical racing, where mistakes have real life consequences, is our threshold. That doesn't take away, however, if we didn't have this threshold, sim racing probably possesses the highest level of pure driving skill. It's true that karting does lose some of its best drivers to kart racing, no doubt, but the sport still holds onto talents like Travis Sinuto, Palomba, Van Wielstein, Hilterbrand, Turney, Norberg, Hunter, Bradshaw, and countless others. Admittedly, karting's fractured structure often means we rarely get to see all of them compete directly, but in terms of sheer depth of talent, few motorsports can match it. In fact, I don't think any can. Some will say the World Rally Championship has the best drivers, but just think for a moment about the sheer number of drivers who race karts competitively. It dwarfs every other real life motorsport, and it's not really a close run thing. What I am saying here is not the number of skills present within a driving situation, but the level to which those specific skills gets tested and put under pressure. Karting gets to the very fundamental tenets of driving. Sure, F1 has Max Verstappen, and I'll concede he's the best driver I've ever seen in a car, but it must be remembered that out of the 64 World Karting Championships that have won in the Premier Senior categories, only eight or so managed to get to F1. That leaves 56 drivers who beat all of those future F1 drivers who were karting at the time and everybody else. And here's the rub. Carters often fail to see the opportunity right in front of them. As I mentioned earlier, many would jump at the chance to leave karting, even if that meant racing in some lower stakes racing series. It's a shame, given that legends like Schumacher and Senna frequently praised karting as the finest, truest form of racing. 
But let's not kid ourselves, there's a reason no one really cares about karting. What's truly rare isn't competitive racing, it's high stakes racing. In my book, Motorsport Sagas, Unlocking the Power of Storytelling in Racing, I argue that this is why people flock to watch F1 rather than the World Karting Championship or any other four-wheel racing series. Formula One is dripping in perceived stakes and prestige, and that's what keeps us watching, even when the racing itself occasionally or frequently falls flat. If you'd like to know how to inject stakes into various motorsport series, please go and buy the book. I'll be very grateful. So, can we make people care? Maybe, maybe not. Every year, a few new drivers enter the senior karting ranks with flashes of charisma and defiance. Yet the sport seems to stifle these personalities. Blandness creeps in, and within three years or so, many of these promising talents are off managing teams or working as mechanics. Their once bright potential quietly extinguished. For today's drivers, here's the hard truth. As long as you're just another face on the grid, you're disposable. You are cogs in a revenue machine, easily replaceable, easily forgotten. And that, in essence, is the tragedy of the modern carter. They are some of the best drivers in the world, but they are the most ignored.